Um, thanks, Nick. Uh, very scared, so scared. Um, sorry if I waffle through and I go really quickly, but stop me if I start rambling. Um, so, uh, apologies for the sense of vertigo. Ooh. Um, my, uh, my scale's slightly different from John's. I grow a range of vegetables um, on around two acres, <laughs> which is just a little bit smaller than John. Um, that includes about an acre and a half field scale, so <laughs> that's kind of divided into five sections. Um, I've also got three polytunnels and a module tunnel, and I raise on all my own plants in the module tunnel and then plant out or I sow directly. Um, I sell to a farm shop and cafe um, based at the farm where I rent my land, and I also sell to some local pubs and restaurants in and around Bath and Bradford and Avon, which is just where I'm based. Um, so this is my second season, and I'm really glad that I started in 2011, not last year, because I think I probably would have given up already <laughs> if I'd started last year. Um, I'm not certified organic, but I am certified with the Wholesome Food Association. Um, I'm just such a small scale that it's at the moment it's not economically viable for me. Um, but I do hope to become certified with one of the organic certifying bodies um, as soon as I can, it's either earning more money or expanding. Um, as Nick said, I did the Soil Association Apprenticeship, which is now part of the Future, Grow uh, Fruit Future Growers program that the Soil Association's um, doing. Oh, oh thanks. Um, so yeah, I, I, um, I still work part-time at the farm where I did my apprenticeship, um, just because I can't quite justify full-time work where I am now. I just can't afford it. So I still work there a couple of days a week. Uh, click that one. Um, so challenges uh, to from a grower's perspective. I think there's quite a few. I think everyone will have their own horror story from 2012. Um, it really did feel like the end of the world. Uh, we had drought in March and then flood for the rest of the year. Um, I had one or two slugs, it's fair to say. Um, I collected quite a few punnets of them going through the tunnel in about two minutes. So. Uh, that was a bit of a disaster. Um, I had no carrot, main crop carrots at all and no main crop parsnips at all, even though I tried three times and just gave up. Um, I managed to grow some carrots in one of my polytunnels in the end, put them in in July just because I was so desperate and they came up wonderfully, so that was good. Um, the brassicas were slow. You can see there they've got wet feet just a little bit. I um, haven't been able to keep on top of the weeds because I couldn't get out to do any weeding. Um, everything was slow and cold or eaten by slugs and then you had to sow them again so let's not look at that picture um, so in the end I did actually um, get some crops in the tunnels and the stuff that did get going was fine so I was actually really lucky um, I resorted to some slug pellets which are the allowed under organic standards the ferric phosphate ones um, and that meant I actually had some crops but um, I've since taken more measures to um, sort of attract more natural predators. So I've built a pond and I'm hoping to adopt some hedgehogs from my local hedgehog sanctuary this year. So hopefully that will help a bit. Um, my very small turnover anyway was definitely down by at least 30% com compared to what, how I wanted it. Um, and I think that these kind of weather patterns are definitely one of the main major challenges for us. Um, I think we're definitely going to have a monsoon season every year, um, judging by the last few years. Um, but a note of hope is that the demand from my chefs and from the farm shops was still really, really high. I, it wasn't a f the case that I had crops going to waste. The problem was not having the crops to sell them. So um, I guess that's one good thing anyway. Um, this has now apparently become a triple dip recession <laughs> because of the weather. Someone was saying on the news the other day, so that's a bit of a negative on the year ahead. Um, and also, John touched on the media coverage and the organic bashing, especially at the end of the year last year. There were two studies that were published or were covered at the same time, the Stanford study and the Oxford study. One saying, oh, organics aren't better for you, and the other one saying, organics aren't better for the environment. So kind of felt like both your legs were being taken away at the same time. Um, I kind of think as well from the leading on from the banking crisis and everyone being very suspicious of bankers and 
that kind of thing, that there's a lot more suspicion around these days. And people think, why am I paying extra for organics in the first place? And you kind of have to do lots of work to justify why you are having to pay that extra money. Um, another sort of problem looming on the horizon as well is uh, all this, all these noises from the government about GM being the way forward. Um, so that's, uh, I'm sure we'll cover that later on as well. Um, so all in all, it's been a bit of a perfect storm and a bit of a disaster year last year for organics. Um, but like I said, my demand didn't go down, even though um, the organic bashing did go ahead. Um, there's a picture there from uh, some, a dish one of my chefs prepared with some of my salad leaves. And the great thing is I've got a couple of chefs who get so excited about salad leaves that they take pictures and put them on Twitter, <laughs> saying how much they like them and how much they like fresh kale. And um, I think that's the key point, really, is people who actually understand food and maybe have a slight idea what's involved in sustainable production actually value things like freshness and taste. Um, so that's definitely a positive. Um, I also think with the organic bashing, you, you do notice these cycles in media. The point with media is what sells newspapers is being slightly controversial. So if everyone's liking organics, then the idea to sell newspapers is to go against organics. And if everyone's bashing organics, then the way to sell your paper is to go for organics. So I think you do have to take media coverage with a pinch of salt. Um, on a, a positive note is the dispatches program on yesterday, which said that you know everyone should be eating more fruit and veg and that kind of thing. Um, hopefully, Horse Burger Gate will also work in our favor. Um, so I think loyal customers, um, they are still there. It's just finding them and keeping hold of them. Um, and as Nick said, there is a huge interest in the apprenticeship scheme and such like schemes around at the moment. So it's definitely a positive in terms of organic growing. Um, there's also growing networks of local growers, which are sort of being coordinated under the um, Organic Growers Alliance. So there's lots of sharing of ideas, getting involved with the onset on farm research and the field labs and the future farming projects. Um, and I think all of this kind of movement does lead to a kind of grassroots kind of PR. So in some ways, we shouldn't rely too much on what the media is saying. We just kind of get on with it, really. Um, so I kind of, the, part of the reason why I'm not certified is all my, customer, all my customers and all my chefs have been on my holding and they can see exactly what I do. Um, I think certification is definitely very valuable for people who are bigger than two acres um, because they'll be selling to people who can't necessarily go and see what they do. So the certification is kind of a shorthand, trusted way of saying, we've seen what they do and it abides by all these things. So um, I think seeing for yourself, though, is the best way to understand what's involved in organic growing. Um, I've put there McFarm evidence. I, I think I was driving past a lorry which had, a McDonald's lorry, which had this beautiful, picturesque, ideal farm on the side. And um, I know they're a great buyer of organic milk, but I'm not sure that if people see that, they might think that's where all their happy beef burgers have come from. And not necessarily the case. Um, so there's a kind of wish list there for what I'd like to see from my tiny little scale, which is um, more education as, in schools as to what's actually involved in growing. You know, some people think that all farms are like organic farms and they don't really realise the industrialisation involved in a lot of the chemical farming. Um, I think there's also there's lots of movement towards some organic friendly research um, i.e. research that isn't biased so or sponsored by chemical companies or GM companies. So proper independent mm -hmm. research um, is definitely the way forward. And I'd also love to see the true cost of non-organic food being passed on. So um, nitrogen costs and fertilizer costs as they go up, hopefully conventional food will, prices will go up. Um, and maybe water taxes on people who end up pumping chemicals into waterways, that would be quite nice, and then that would be passed on to their products as well. Um, 
And there was just this idea I had as well about um, a lot of, especially growers, do have volunteers and woofers and um, other kinds of free workers and free labour forces coming on their holdings. Um, but it would be quite nice to get involved with really large, almost corporate companies and try and encourage them to have a one day a month volunteer day. Um, I think if people can actually go on the farm and see, see what happens, they'll kind of get it a bit more. Um, so the benefits of organic production, we've obviously covered quite a few with um, John earlier on, the wildlife in particular, and also perhaps the yield. Um, but it's great to come to these kind of conferences because it does remind you of those benefits. It's quite difficult. It's quite easy to forget why it is you're doing what you're doing when you're so close to it every day. But when you take a step back, you remember, oh yeah, that's why, that's why I'm an organic grower. I remember now. Um, and also, going back to what Becky was saying about having an open mind, I think organic growers are amazingly creative because they have that open mind originally. And they'll look into um, really creative solutions, whether it's tools for a particular job, um, different types of crops to grow, and also different ways of pitching their product, whether it's box schemes, supermarkets, market stalls, um, veg vans, that kind of thing. Um, but the, probably one of the main benefits is that food is a necessity and it's a pleasure. So I think organic growing is um, like having a, a food, instead of having a food pill, which you need to survive, you like to eat a nice plate of food. And I think organic, organic growing is exactly the same. Instead of having desperate, bash it out food, you want to actually enjoy growing. And organic growing is definitely the way to do that. Um, but otherwise, I find it quite odd to justify why it is I grow organically. I kind of feel it's a bit like someone saying to me, why are you going out to sea in a boat without holes? And I kind of think, well, why would I go to sea with a boat with holes? It doesn't make any sense at all. So um, <laughs> I kind of think it's just, it's just such an obvious thing. I, I find it quite difficult to kind of backtrack and work out their point of view sometimes. So. Um, I think that can make you come across as uh, you don't really know what you're talking about. You, there isn't a good reason for being organic, but actually it's because you're coming at it from a very common sense point of view. It's quite hard to talk to people who don't seem to have much common sense sometimes, but we must try. Um, and also, um, I think that goes back to the communication again as well. Um, it, is, it is quite difficult to talk to people who don't really understand, so the way to do that is to say, I could tell you these things, but you won't really understand it. So come, come and have a look. And then go and have a look at that industrial plant over there and then see what you think. Um, and I think for every person, obviously this is much easier my scale than a really huge scale, but for every one person who comes on my farm, they stay a customer or, you know, a cust not necessarily of me, but of organic food. So I think we kind of have to make our own markets in that kind of small scale kind of way. Um, and then that's probably the best benefit of being an organic grower. Uh, that was the one sunny day we had in May last year after about five weeks of rain and the strawberries took advantage of the sun and ripened. Um, so I think that's probably the first and foremost benefit is you get to try that strawberry first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.